All right, we finally got the Percept 100D. No, regular 100, sorry. Yeah, I got three. This is my first time hitting with the Percept 100. I've hit with the V-Core Pro 100 before, and I think in the comments and potentially the last video I made about my first impressions on this racket lineup, I mentioned that the 100 would probably be my first choice. However, the lines are definitely a little more blurred between the 97 now and the 100. I think the 97 feels a little bit more firm and a little more crisp. It's very subtle, but it's there on the new 97. So in some ways it brings it closer to the feel of the V-Core Pro 100, if that makes sense. But now the Percept 100 is even slightly more firm than the last 100. And I like that. Again, I'll probably say it a couple times throughout the video, but the V-Core Pro line, all of them just felt a little bit too mushy, even the 100. The 100 felt the least that way, but all of them just felt too soft. But the 100, the least so. So if I had to pick a V-Core Pro, it would be the 100. After hitting with this one, I still feel like it would probably be the 100. And if I'm talking about the 100D, that one's actually way stiffer, like a whole other racket. It, it feels like it plays like a V-Core Pro or like a Percept, I should say, but it doesn't feel like it. You know what I mean? If you look at the way the ball comes off the racket and stuff, you might think, okay, that belongs in the Percept line. But if you just feel it and do a blind test on how the ball or racket feels, you might not feel like it belongs in the same family of rackets. So I will say that, and I wonder how the 97D will feel. I'd have the 97D right now, except that I just haven't been able to get my hands on a demo. Obviously, the Percept line is pretty popular, and my tennis shop, Courtside Tennis, has those in high demand, as they do this racket, but I just managed to get my hands on one. So it's not so much that I'm trying to make as many videos possible <laughs> with the Percept line, I'm just working with what I'm able to get. And that's why this video is on the Percept 100. We'll see if the next one will be on the 97D or if I'll just throw that in with an overall Percept racket review lineup, you know, like just all of them <laughs> reviewing the whole lineup. That's what I'm trying to say here. This video is not scripted. I'm kind of just uh, saying things off the cuff as I watch myself hit some balls with my friend over here. These courts were recently resurfaced, so that's nice. Great weather. Summer's kind of tapering off, so you still have the warmth and the sunlight, but it's not just absolutely beating down on you feeling, feeling like it's giving you cancer within 20 minutes, you know? It just feels like it's keeping you warm and toasty, but not shortening your lifespan. <laughs> My friend's all sleeved up with the sun hat, though. She's not trying to get all that sunlight on her. I get it. Yeah, the racket plays well. It's pretty comfortable, but it doesn't feel mushy. It's almost like the perfect blend of those two worlds. I feel like the 97 will maybe be the most popular, but I also feel like the 100 should be, and it might be pretty close. I don't know about you guys, but something about the slightly smaller head sizes, I just, I, I'm more attracted to that. I don't know why. Maybe it's because... I associate a smaller head size with control, or like a better player uses a smaller head size, you know? Maybe that's why I kind of want to prefer the smaller head sizes, but if I'm really focused on how the racket feels, I prefer the 100, probably. Again, like I said, it's really close. And I'll probably have that figured out by the time I do my final review on the Percept lineup. But keep in mind, even though this is a 100, this is still a very control-oriented racket. I don't want you guys thinking like, oh, I want a lot more power, so I'm going to get the 100 as opposed to the 97. In the case of the Percept line, it's hard to say if you really get that much more power. I mean, you probably do, but it's not like suddenly it's a pure arrow or something, you know? Not at all. Not even close. That being said, my main racket now definitely seems to be the pure arrow 98, so I didn't go with the 100 there. But going up a little bit in size can be nice because you get some free stability as well. Just with the racket head being larger, it is also inherently a little more stable. But hopefully it doesn't come with too much power. I know some people definitely don't want that, but again, I don't think anything in the Percept line is going to represent a racket that gives you too much power. So don't worry about that. I'd give the 100 a shot just because it's not as extreme in the soft, squishy control direction. Hello and welcome to the car. 
I have with me today the Yonex Percept 100, which I actually thought and figured would be probably my favorite one from the Percept lineup. And if I'm doing this video in order, you've seen that I've already hit with it. Today was my first hit with it. And I've also hit with the 97 already. Honestly, at this time between the two, it's hard to say if I prefer one to the other very much. I still probably lean towards the 100. It does feel slightly more solid. Not the kind of solid that you get from like a really heavy racket, but the racket feels like it maintains its form a little bit better through contact, especially as you turn the things up. As soon as you start hitting harder, those things become a little more obvious. So just like in the other videos, I'm gonna go back to the same courts and do a little bit of machine hitting while we still got some sunlight. Gotta enjoy that sunlight while we can. Slowly but surely it is becoming winter and then soon it'll be dark at like 5 p.m., which is super not cool. I don't like that time of year, at least in terms of how much darkness there is. Yeah, you see that sun flickering on the lens here? That's what I want. I want that all day. Oh no, the courts are busy. Hmm, what should I do? All right, I found another court. It's only a few minutes away. So we'll go there and I'll talk a little bit more about this racket. I feel like I get pretty good shape on the ball as in easy access to spin. So that's important for me. If I don't get that, I really notice it on my backhand side. It's hard to notice that stuff on my forehand side because I feel like my forehand, I'm just gonna <laughs> have to get in the way of that sun here. I feel like my forehand can make so many more adjustments than my backhand. Like if I'm not getting enough spin, I can always find a way to get enough spin to kind of hit the ball how I want to. Even on some of the flattest hitting rackets, I can still figure it out on my forehand. My forehead is so adaptable and so smart and so developed. My backhand just isn't, I guess I would say. Backhands are so frustrating. I say this a lot, but I genuinely often wish that I just had two forehands. If it wasn't so hard to switch grips between the left and right hand, I really think I would dedicate more time to developing a lefty forehand, just so I wouldn't have to have a backhand. But I've been working on my backhand quite a lot and it's getting better. I'm hating it less and less. It's starting to feel more comfortable. And now that I've figured out my rackets more or less, my backhands just don't feel as bad as they used to. So what I'm trying to say is that this racket isn't terrible for my backhand and that's a good thing. Last thing my backhand needs is anything that makes it harder. So my backhand needs a racket that is decently stable and also has pretty good access to spin. A racket that's too light and too floppy, my backhand is gonna suffer and a racket that doesn't provide much spin very easily is also going to punish my backhand. Again, either of those things on my forehand side, I can always find a way to still hit a good forehand. With that being said, I think that the choice between the 97 and the 100 on the Percept line is a little bit harder than it was on the V-Core Pro. I would say on the V-Core Pro, it was much more obviously the 100 because the 100 just felt less squishy, less mushy, and the, 90 fe the 97 felt so mushy. It just almost like it wasn't even an option. And I think the current 100 Percept actually feels even less mushy than the 100 V-Core Pro did. But that is true for all the Percept lines. So I like the adjustments that the Percept line seems to be about. Again, just a bit more stiffness, but still being true to what you would expect from a V-Core Pro. And yeah, I'm gonna get to these courts and just hit some balls, all kinds of different balls. We'll do some slices, we'll do some softer shots. Maybe we'll focus on placement a little bit, but we'll also kill some balls. And I'll talk about how the racket kind of performs. Maybe I'll even compare it to my Pure Aero 98s and VS. All right, I will see you guys when I get back to the courts. The new courts, I should say. I don't think I've ever been to this spot. All right, we're pretty much suited up here. Got my slinger bag pointing to the backhand corner because that's a shot that I like to work on. And I can always step inside out for some forehands. Courts are pretty solid here and there's a lot of activity. Got a skate park over there. I used to be at the skate park all the time as a little kid on bikes and rollerblades. There's the slinger bag. I'm on court one, volleyball and some tennis over there. All right. By the way, the string in here is Luxalon Element. In case you're wondering, I'm just gonna do a variety of shots. Forehands, backhands, slices, down the line, cross court. Who knows, I'm gonna be pretty random with it, but I'll be getting another racket. All right, I've said this before, but I do love hitting on the machine. I think it's such a good way and an efficient way to get to know a racket because every ball is basically the exact same as the last ball. And you can do whatever you want. You can hit the same exact shot over and over. You can get into whatever position you want. You can pick any spot on the court to hit at. Any level of intensity, you can really go for stuff without consequence of losing the point or just ruining the rally. I genuinely think 
using a ball machine can be one of the best ways to get to know a racket. You spend so much time running around and kind of reacting and adapting to your player when you're rallying. It can actually be hard to get to know a racket that way. Of course, you got to do both things. I think hitting with the machine is really good at getting to know the racket just in terms of how it feels and how it plays. I'm going to clean a few of these up. All right, same idea, but we'll do a different angle just to mix it up. I also have it feeding a slightly higher feed. Rest is the same. So as I'm hitting with this, I really appreciate the depth I get. Definitely not an overpowered racket, and you can totally put enough shape on it to drive the ball back into the court, or keep the ball back into the court, I should say. You can see that, that's a good power. Good power, good spin, you can see that arc on the ball, the way it jumps off the court. It's stable enough for a backhand. At least in my case, it's something I'm pretty conscious about. Slices are good too. It took me a little bit of time to figure it out, but I did. I'm using some super high quality pressureless balls, by the way, from a company called Spinshot. I think they make by far the best pressureless balls. A little bit better, actually, than the Wilson Trinities, which I believe were used on the WTA tournaments. Some of them, I don't remember exactly where, but, you know, it's a respected ball. People have mixed feelings about it. But it's one of the nicer pressureless balls and I think this is even a little bit nicer. That being said, there is the occasional Wilson Trinity mixed into here, but I use pressureless balls because they basically never go dead. And if you get a really nice one, it's extremely, extremely convincing in terms of how a real tennis ball feels. I think if you just mixed in a bunch of fresh balls with these spin shot balls, most people would be extremely hard pressed to find any difference. So it's really nice that my experience on the machine, or whatever I learn on the machine, seems to translate well in the real world. All right, for the last test here while we still have some daylight, I'll just get as much spin on these balls as I can, see how that goes. I want to see how the limitations on spin feel. I mean, this is a pretty spin-friendly racket, but I don't have zero in here or wasabi, and it's not like this most spin-friendly racket of all time, but you know, it's pretty good. As you can see here, I get some nice shape on the ball. I would say that this is actually quite a spin-friendly racket. Get a lot of spin on here, and that's something really important in my game. There's so much I do with the spin. Sometimes I go over the opponent, or around them, or just overwhelm them with the spin by pushing them back, but also just the net clearance you get. Sometimes you can pick up a really low ball and still give it a lot of pace that maybe you couldn't on a racket that doesn't give you as much spin. Spin's pretty good. I don't feel like you could really complain too much about that. Obviously, I'd be getting more spin even if I had Restring Zero or Toralines Wasabi in here. But I don't, and that's fine. I'm still able to do what I gotta do. But if you guys want to get my favorite strings of all time or just learn more about them, you can use my code in the description. But I'll also leave a link to my video I just made to answer all the questions people have been asking me about Toraline and Restring. Because I talk about those two strings a lot. I talk about how much spin and durability they offer, and I'm often asked if I have a favorite between the two, so I answer all of those questions in that video, and I just posted it. So check that out. It should be pretty insightful for anybody that wants to learn more about those two strings. For anyone that cares a lot about topspin and durability, even tension maintenance, I cannot suggest anything above those other strings I just mentioned. So check that video out. You can get discounts. Links for that are below. Links for all kinds of stuff are below, and please subscribe and stay tuned for the official Percept lineup review. I'm working on it one to two rackets at a time, and the last one to try here would be the 97D. So stay tuned for that. I should have my hands on that in a few days here, and if you guys have any questions about these Percept rackets, let me know. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.